Wow. I want to climb. Very Martian. It has a surreal quality. When I'm writing science fiction, it strikes me that in the past, it was always a matter of um, spaceships. Because of Star Trek, I call it cardboard sets. Like when you're looking at the TV show and you realize that if they were to kick their, their spaceship console, it would fall over. And I thought that you could do better than that in literature. It's that you could get real rock. You could get the, the texture and feel of the real that if you were doing something futuristic and bizarre and realistic, that you would believe it more if it felt like it was made of real materials. So it's partly just aesthetics. It was a literary effect. It's a, what Bart calls the effect of the real. I wanted that. I'm Kim Stanley Robinson, and I am a science fiction writer from California. I grew up in Southern California in a time when it was an agricultural community. It was orchards, uh, orange groves, avocado, lemon. And uh, in the time I was growing up, all those groves were torn out and replaced by a cityscape, suburbia and urban automotive freeways. And at the end of that process, I discovered science fiction. I was about 18. And it struck me then that this was the the literature that best described the way that my reality felt. So it's been 50 years where I've felt like the world is a science fiction novel that we are all co-writing together. What I mean by that, I think, is that there's um, acceleration of history, rapid technological and social change, such that you can't describe the present. You have to aim a little ahead and you describe a near future. By writing about the future, you're really writing about now in a way that has a poetic and symbolic meaning. It's, it's the realism of our time. When I was young, it was a matter of thinking that humanity would go to space and that the solar system was like our neighborhood, and it's an interesting and beautiful neighborhood and I quickly worked up a, a future history in which humans were on Mars and some of the moons of the other planets and some of the asteroids and it was a way of talking about civilization as a as a technological space as landscapes that we transform and then as time went by the decades went by it became more and more obvious that we are actually creatures of Earth expressions of this planet only When I'm trying to decide what novel to write next, I mostly am thinking, what's an interesting story? And it has to do with human potentialities. Could we become this? Could we go to the stars? Could we uh, live on Mars? What could we do? And then does that make an interesting story to tell? And sometimes the, uh, I've come to the conclusion that actually we can't do these things. Maybe science fiction says humanity is supposed to go to the stars to fulfill its destiny, and then I think, no, that's wrong then it's a story to tell. My most recent novel, The Ministry for the Future, has been a, a transformative event in my life, and I've had to try to figure out why, because it's like novel 20 for me. It was the end of a long sequence of trying to write near futures that described how we could get to a better relationship to the biosphere. And that's been going on for quite a few books now. But I wanted to put all my cards on the table and write a kind of a summa that actually started now and went forward the next 30 years, uh, writing up a kind of best case scenario where utopia is simply defined as dodging the mass extinction event. And that would be a utopian history given the desperate straits we're in right now. So Ministry was an attempt to do that, to really write a novel of the collective of the next 30 years of society uh, making the best of a bad situation.
The climate crisis is a strange problem to have for humanity because it never really is happening to you unless you are in a storm. But say even if you're in a drought, well, we're in a drought now in California. I hear Denmark had a little drought, but in California it might be a 10-year drought and society be smashed. But day to day, until the taps run dry, you have a hard time imagining it. So climate change is a difficult problem simply to imagine as a lived experience. And as a novelist, I'm trying to write about characters in their daily lives, living their lives and having plots. Luckily, plots are made of things going wrong. So you can, in fact, make up some very good plots based on climate change when the, the slow violence turns into fast violence. At that moment, you've got a story to tell. And so in Ministry for the Future, we tried to write the story of what it would be like when it finally strikes you. And the power of the imagination is strong enough to change our behaviors in the present. And this is what I'm hoping for when I write my books. When you're writing science fiction, the science can be minimally important sometimes. Depends on the story. If you tell a story of a future in which a, a religious leader convinces everybody on Earth uh, to follow that cult, that is a science fiction story, but the science isn't important in it. But on the other hand, if you're zipping around the galaxy in a spaceship that goes faster than light and you're talking to aliens that speak perfect English, I mean, this also is science fiction, but it has practically nothing to do with science itself. It's a kind of a, a fantasy space where you say, it's a scientism, where you say science can solve all problems and turn it into a form of magic, which isn't quite true. It isn't true at all. And I, I'm not interested in that. For me, this is an H.G. Wells sentence, where anything is possible, nothing is interesting. Because anything's possible, the writer's just uh, fooling around with you. And at a certain point, magic A will beat magic B, but it's like having a dream, or telling somebody your dream. It's ultimately boring. That'll get me in trouble. <laughs>